Let's go to America now and more politics. Donald Trump has restored the Supreme Court's conservative majority by nominating Judge Neil Gorsuch to a lifetime position. Protests against Mr. Trump's choice were made outside the Supreme Court following the announcement. So far, overwhelmingly, the protests against Donald Trump have been from Democrat voters and at more senior levels from Democrat appointments. But writing for the Huffington Post, Robert Kutner, co-founder and co-editor of the American Prospect magazine and a man whose work has appeared everywhere from the New York Times to Atlantic to the New Yorker, says Republican supporters are already showing signs of deserting him. Really? Yes, says Bob Kutner, Kutner because, quote, it's so horribly clear that Trump is unfit for office. And when Republicans turn against him, impeachment becomes a possibility because, again, I quote, it's the only way to get him out. Really? Or is this just wishful thinking? It seems to me that maybe you've got half of the Republicans in Congress who are just willing to go with him because they view him as their instrument. And you've got the other half who are really becoming alarmed for their country, and they're becoming alarmed for what this is going to do to the Republican Party. His, his approval ratings are now down in the 30s, and even though he can pretend that, um, oh, these are just made-up uh, poll numbers, normal Republicans are going to pay attention to that. And then I think the other thing that's happening is you've got serious people who are building a dossier of all of the impeachable offenses that he's committed. So I think this is going to gather some momentum. This is not Turkey. This is not Hungary. The, the no. United States still has some checks, some constitutional checks. And also, it seems to me what you're saying is one of the biggest checks might, in fact, not be that meritorious, but that is uh, Republican congressmen, senators, looking at self-preservation. In other words, if Trump is going to be a disaster, they want to recuse themselves from the impact of that. Yes, quite, quite. Okay. And I, I also think that you've got someone like... You also have someone like John McCain, who's, I think, 79 years old. He's in his last term. He actually cares about his country. He's alarmed. He's horrified at some of the things that Trump is doing. And you, you do have a few Republicans in that category as well. Yeah, you cited the example of Mitch McConnell, who was rejecting Trump's view on Putin. What about Trump's constituency, Trump's electorate? Because the more people like you and I have this conversation, in some perverse kind of way, the more they feel he is their man, that he is outside the establishment, that he is annoying precisely the people that they hoped he would annoy. Yeah, but I honestly think that's maybe 25 to 30 percent of the electorate. Because if you look at who voted for Trump, you, you had maybe half his vote were, were hardcore, um, far-right economic nationalists, maybe even uh, neo-fascists. But a lot of people who voted for Trump were people who just could not abide Hillary Clinton or who felt that they'd been losing out economically and they might as well take a chance on this guy. But I think when push comes to shove, I think half of the people who voted for Trump are starting to get alarmed by some of the things that he's doing. That's why his approval ratings are down in the 30s. Can we talk then literally about the mechanism of impeachment? If it happens, how would it happen and who would lose it? I mean, there's no Ken Starr. We all remember his extraordinary, bizarre, singular pursuit of Bill Clinton. Is there an equivalent? Who would lead it and how? Well, I think what will probably happen, and I've, I've been in some conversations about this, you've got very serious people now collecting uh, dossiers on things that he's doing that are impeachable. I think you're going to see a Blue Ribbon Citizens Committee of some kind that's bipartisan that will build this dossier and forward it to the House of Representatives Committee on the Judiciary, which is where an impeachment usually begins. And then when this thing ripens politically, when some Republicans are ready to cross the aisle because this man is such a menace to everything, then um, you would you would open a formal formal inquiry. They could set up a select committee on impeachment. They could do it through the House Judiciary Committee. And that that will take, you know, months, I think, rather than years. But I think it's going to happen because he is such a psychopath. And that has not escaped the attention of serious Republicans. 
Of course, serious Republicans will also be watching the salutary lesson, for example, of Sally Yates getting the boot. And the people who go first on this, if they go too early, are going to be punished by Trump in ways that will leave them and everyone who might be tempted to back them reeling, surely. Well, except that the American Constitution does have this device known as separation of powers. And Trump can't do anything to particular members of Congress or to particular senators. I mean, he can... You know, he can try to play games and deny their states some uh, benefits. But what what is he going to do to John McCain? Uh, there's really nothing he can do to John McCain. And I think there are Republican members of the House in the same situation who, uh, you know, there was a book that John Kennedy wrote called Profiles in Courage. And we will either see some profiles in courage or I really fear for my country. That's Robert Kutner, who uh, has written for the Huffington Post about how impeachment might happen. And yes, we aren't even a fortnight into the Trump presidency, and people are already discussing that.